what is up my nation you beautiful bastards today we're going to be taking a look at uh, war thunder's 1.53 firestorm update and most importantly we're going to be taking a look at some of the things that are good and a lot of the things that are bad so let's start off with the good the good is america finally gets some decent uh, uh low tier bombers with the tbd1 devastator of course now the devastator as far as i know can actually take just shy of, uh, of 16, uh, 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 1,600 pounds of bombs. It can even take a uh, 2,000 pound plus uh, torpedo, which will destroy destroyers in one hit. And you'll need three of those bad boys to take out a battleship or a carrier. So, you know, it, it is pretty gosh darn amazing. Um, let's take a look at what offensive armaments they get. The typical consumables. It even has a tail gunner, so there you go. Uh, then there's also the SBD, SB2C4 Helldiver. It's basically an upgrade of the 1C. Uh, I believe it can carry a bigger payload. And uh, actually gets an armored cockpit, if I remember correctly. Uh, this one actually carries rockets as well, if you want to go uh, rocket mode. You know, rocket man. If you want to go do a rocket man, you can. Um, other than that, there's really nothing new for the Americans in aviation. Uh, as for tanks, of course, the, the T-25, uh, unfortunately, it is uh, 6.0. There's also the uh, rocket sh uh, uh, Pershing, of course, but uh, again, that's behind a paywall. Now, one of the things that I thought was going to be addressed, but sadly hasn't yet, is the lack of 4.7 battle rating tanks in the American lineup. The only 4.7 tanks, now if I'm wrong, I'll put an annotation in the video, somewhere around, you know, like down here or something, that there is actually only, as far as I know, two 4.7 tanks. And they are both the Hellcat. The Premium and the Regular. Everything else is either above 4.7 or way below 4.7. So, in effect, they've still made the, the uh, American Tank Destroyer line completely obsolete. Unless you just want to, you know, uh, uh, free, free EXP, you know, uh, boost research past the Hellcat. And go straight to uh, the the Jackson, which uh, at, even at, at six point three. Let's see what what can hang with it at six point three. You don't look at a main battle tank because you've lost there completely. Uh, Seventy six is five three. T twenty five is six. So you could probably run your your uh, M thirty six with your T twenty five and your Walker Bulldog. Yeah, you 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 wouldn't even be able to run it with a T twenty eight. Or the Super Hellcat. Oh, yeah, wait, you could run the Super Hellcat. I have no idea what makes it super, but it's a Super Hellcat. But uh, that's the Americans and whatnot. Now let's take a look at the Germans. The Germans' newest tank they've gotten is the Honning Egg Yetzel uh, Panzer uh, 45, which is a very long uh, tank destroyer. It's very long. It's uh, 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 twice as long as... Uh, a Hetzer or a uh, Sturmgeschütz. Uh, you can tell it's still roughly loosely based around the uh, uh, Hetzer and the Sturmgeschütz. To describe this tank, it would be like if a Hetzer and a Sturmgeschütz had sex, basically. And ta-da, there it is. Uh, only thing is they've made it a little bit longer, which means uh, uh, horizontal profile. Uh, uh, just basically be wary of your sides. Uh, it's a very low profile tank, but just be very very uh, uh, careful with your sights. Uh, that's it, uh, with the exception of the um, Panzer Wave for 42, the rocket launcher. Again, that's behind a paywall, sadly. Under aviation, they gained a whole bunch of BF 109s, the uh, F 4 series. Uh, so, yeah, we've got now two extra F 4s to worry about. Uh, it's bad enough we've got the F 1, the F 2. Now we've got the F 4. And I believe the F3 is going to be coming in as a premium. Uh, so, yeah, that's all. Oh, and they've also got uh, some new low-level Donniers. Uh, 17E1 and the uh, Z2. Uh, along with uh, uh, more upgrades to the Z7. I don't know why the Z7 is over here. The Z7 should be over there with the rest of the Donniers. But they decided to give it its own bloody tech tree branch. Makes no fucking sense. Uh Soviets. Uh, Soviets basically gained nothing new in aviation. Absolutely nothing. Yay. Finally. However, they did gain, again, another paywall rocket launcher, low tier tank at 
So uh, be careful of that, guys. They literally gained nothing new for you to regular, re uh, or, or apart from the PT-76, but then again, the PT-76 is a fucking turd. Uh, practically no armor, less armor than the Hellcat tank destroyer. Literally, less armor than a Hellcat tank destroyer. 50 cows will just wreck this thing. You won't even have to fire your main battle cannon, and if you do, just make sure that the shot that you do fire happens to be uh, either HE or um, heat ammunition. If it's uh, any, if you're firing Sabo or armor piercing, you're going to pen right through the tank and do bugger all for damage. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for those. Uh, now this is where the biggest letdown is, in my honest opinion. Uh, England gets it, the new uh, Hawker Hunter F1. As you can say, I'm already currently working on unlocking it. I already have the rest of the jets unlocked. I just don't have the, the current finances to buy them. Now, this is where I am extremely upset and extremely let down. The fact that they have made every single British tank in the lineup behind a paywall. And the paywalls aren't cheap. The first tank's $10. Okay, yeah, fine. Work your ass on a corner. Blow an old man for 10 bucks. Go to your local Walmart, throw it on a Walmart debit card, ta-da, you're good. The Achilles is, I believe, 19 or 20 bucks. The, 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 the links are in my Facebook group. Uh, uh, links will be in the video description for the exact costs. You cannot buy any of these tanks in one great big mega bundle. You know, where you just buy it once and you unlock them all and they, they throw in a little bit of extra premium time and maybe a little extra, you know, a little summon to summon. Um... Maybe those god awful stupid crate keys, but no, they they you have to buy them all individually. One, you can go straight to the Black Prince if you want, or straight to the Sherman Firefly if you want, or, or just the Achilles, etc., etc. But you cannot buy all of them. You have to buy them all individually. Um, my honest opinion is you are raking your players across coals and your nickel and dime diming them. Um, J Japan again. Nothing new for Japan except for a new premium A7, uh, A7M1. Again, it's a premium plane that has a, cu a cookie cutter, cut and paste flight model of the um, uh, A6M5, basically. That's all it is. Just co cookie cutter from the A6M5, which is uh, one of those ones. Oh, literally, that's all it is, is cookie cutter. Only thing is, it's lower, a lower battle tier from 4.7 to 3.3. Um, pretty much that's it. Nothing new for Japan. Absolutely nothing new. Now, I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room, which I haven't touched on yet, and that's the new skill tree system. Let's take a look, shall we? This is the new skill tree system. It goes on a stars rating system. Uh, it's no longer points, so, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Notice that your repair ranks now no longer get bonuses. You used to be able to get a, a passive bonus for hitting aced crew and experienced crew. Uh, same as your gunners. Your gu gunners no longer get a, a passive bonus. They only get a bonus to uh, uh, hit points and accuracy. That's it. They've really royally fucked the system. And they've kept the original pricing the same, but they've actually upped the points for skills. For example, let's take a look at my boomerang, shall we? Ready? I, I, are you ready for how much it's going to cost to up for my reload? Look, eleven forty-five. Even if I bought the thousand eagle several times, there is no no way I'm going to get my reload up without having to buy the thousand dollar uh, the thousand eagle uh, buy-in at least three times. They have ridiculously and erroneously made it unspeakably insane. See? You're, you're going to spend hours, days, trying to figure out the metric point system as to what's going to not make my pilot black out. And I, I do mean that. And yes, visually it's easier, but stat points wise it's not. And your stat points don't increase 
i.e. you're not going to get like a thousand freaking stat points for your crew per game. You're going to get like 20 or 30 or 40 like you do normally. Maybe 60 with premium. So yeah, enjoy the new stat system where it's going to take you an additional maybe 100 plus games to get any of your stats up one star and you're still not going to notice any difference. Bombers, I, I feel so sorry for you guys. Because you poor bastards are going to have some serious hoops to jump through. Uh, also, they uh, uh, with the crew, with the crew, they've also tweaked uh, uh, a few of the other things. Most notably, and, and I mean, look, 17.10 to go up to max out the reload. 17.10. That is just ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, of course, the qualification system now is different as well. Um, your crew has to be over a certain level like it normally used to. But notice how look what it gives you. Now, it, it literally tells you what you get two plus twos in. Awareness, G-tolerance, stamina, vitality. Gunners. Gunners don't mean shit. I'm in a fighter. I'm not in a fucking bomber. They need to differentiate the difference between bomber crew and fighter crew. And they won't. They want you to spend erroneously stupid amounts of points in skills that you're never going to need. Everybody knows in the old system, for example, let's take a look at my, my uh, Hellcat here. In the old system, you used to put points in your gunners. You used to put points in their G tolerance and everything else just to get your crew levels up. So you could go from basic to, to experienced just for that extra reload time on your fighters. You had no intention of ever making your crew, that, that plane, become a bomber crew. But you had to erroneously spend those points in order to get up there now. And sadly, you still have to do that. They still will not differentiate about whether, oh, this is going to be a bomber-only crew or a fighter-only crew. I think that when you purchase a plane... For example, let, 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 let's change a vehicle, okay? Say you want to purchase a bomber, okay? Say we're purchasing the, this, this habit. As you purchase it, it should come up, give you a pop-up saying, do you want to dedicate this ground crew to bombers slash heavy fighters or only yes no if you say yes then it automatically differentiates the difference i.e it understands that you're going to be spending points and skills that you're going to need to make your plane viable the skill system in the game greatly and i do mean greatly needs a major effing overhaul what they've done here is just a visual appeasement to make people who play consoles incredibly happy who play Japanese RPGs. Oh, I got an SS five-star rating. You know, doesn't mean shit. SS five-star ratings don't mean shit to any, anyone who's not Asian. You know, a British guy looks at him and goes, well, S is really bad. A plus is good, right? 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 Because that's how we do our fucking rating system in England. You know, an A plus, an A plus plus is always better than a fucking F. You know, F is a fail, A is a pass. But no, Japan likes to do it differently. But then again, they read their magazines backwards as well. So, at the end of the day, guys, what do I think on the new patch? I think it's a monumental fucking flash in the pan. Um, we could go ahead and uh, take a look at how they've designed the new... Uh, Graphics rendering, so I'm going to go tank. We're going to take the Hellcat out for a quick test drive. And uh, we'll take a look, shall we? And we're back, guys. We're looking at the beautiful, beautiful Hellcat. Of course, there is the Panzer 1C we've hit. And you, my son, are... Fucking going nowhere. Nice. Of course, that's the mouse. 
some reason my zoom's not working. Wow, they've definitely messed around with the zoom. Panzer 1C. Yeah, it's not hard to kill the Panzer 1C. Fifty cows have gotten a new uh, audio line. So there's the Panther. Notice how they've given you the potential millimeters and degrees now. Still not the zoom. Oh yeah. I could do this all day long. Okay. Boom, thank you. Well, graphically the game is much better. I'm now getting 110 plus frames with everything set on uh, medium plus. The 90mm gun was always a beautiful gun. Yes, it's the, not the coaxial. There's the Yag Tiger. Gonna readjust our sights. Sending it to 80 millimeters. Boom, there's his tranny gone. Gunner, driver and machine gunner are dead. Fire. And then last but not least. Oh, I only wounded. And so, graphically, um, well, the game actually looks pretty smooth, the new game engine. Of course, when it comes to a mouse, you've got to get in close. Four hundred plus meters. Yep. Oh no, if this was a real match, that mouse would have really killed me by now. Two hundred and twenty one millimeters at ten. So I should be able to in theory penetrate. Yeah. So Boom. 
Yes, I know where to shoot a mouse. And now, so do you. <laughs> but again, guys, let's get back to the hangar, shall we? Graphically, the game looks amazing. And so we've looked at some visuals. We've looked at the new up, uh, some of the new vehicles. Not all of them, of course. We've looked at some. Um, and I've given you my opinion on the new crew system and how asinine it is. And the fact that lately, every new patch that every game seems to be coming out with, it's usually a paywall, a paywall, a paywall, a paywall. Not everyone who plays games like War Thunder and other tank-based MMOs have the money to be competitive in your game. If you want a competitive esports scene, don't treat your player base like other uh, like other tank MMOs. Now, look at what Armored Warfare does. Armored Warfare, yes, you don't necessarily need a premium tank to be competitive. I've seen some players use regular uh, Leopard A1s and actually beat premium tanks of the same tier like they're a red-headed stepchild. Okay, so, you know, learn from other tank, learn from other companies here, Gaijin. Okay, guys, anyway, thanks for watching. You guys have been awesome and very sexy. So keep your ships flying, keep your enemies dying. Your commander is out, and I'll see you guys in the next one, my friends.